Okay. I'm going to show you something that you've never seen before. This is a Crooks radiometer. You've seen that before. Obviously, it's been around for ages. But let me show you something first, and then let me explain to you something really important that you, I guarantee you do not know. Now, I'm just using high capacitance, purple, i.e. blue in spectrum light, to sprint up the Crooks radiometer. This is a very low-intensity LED not touching the radiometer you see it spinning up now let's take a look at blue in spectrum this is blue in spectrum the purple was but this is a, a less intense light source nothing what about green or red you'll get absolutely nothing Nothing whatsoever. Just as bright, all same intensity. Apply purple light. It starts to spin up again. Not very fast, but this is a low intensity LED. But it's very high capacitance. The red LED with same intensity will never spin it up, nor will the blue. I'm about to tell you something really important here. Let me turn all the lights on, and let me come right back. Let me tell you what's going on, okay? Something that you had no idea about. And right now, I'm going to take a dump on all the ideas that you thought that you understood about modern science. This device is so simple, you can... Mail order one from eBay, five or six bucks. It's basically just two things. It's not even vacuum sealed, although this one might be. On the end of this needle is a little glass vial of which are attached little veins of metals coated white on one side, black on the other. If I apply a real high intensity light, it'll start spinning up. This isn't that high intensity, but you can see what's going on. You're like, oh, okay, well, this is boring. Well, hold on, I'm getting to the good part, okay? We think we're so advanced with our quad-core processors. And look, I was number one for two years running on Apple for answering tech support on the MacBook Air. We think we're so advanced. Look at this. This is today. This is not, you know, yesteryear. These are all the theories about how the Crookes radiometer works. There are many, many theories. You see, this simple thing, which is more simple than a damn saltine cracker, modern science, oh, we've got particle accelerators in France, and we've got the Hubble telescope, and uh, we've, you know, we're so advanced. No, we're not. Modern science has still not come to a conclusion as to how the hell this works. Don't believe me? Don't give a damn. Go research it for yourself. There are thermodynamic explanations, which, you know, kind of seems logical that, oh, well, you know, if you turn it on the white, you can actually stop it, but if you point it towards the black, it starts to spin up and be like, well, it's heat. You know, black heats up faster, and therefore that's why it starts to spin in the direction of the applied light. There have been uh, mechanical explanations, especially these particle idiots that think, well, it's actually light beating on the, the black veins and, you know, pressing it, uh, like, you know, pressing against a car or something. Thermodynamic explanation, black body radiations, um, force explanations, um, pressure explanations. This device has been around for a long time, this Crookes radiometer. Science has still not figured out how this works. I, however, have, and I'm the first person in the world who has. And the reason I have is because this fat, bald tattoo freak you see in front of you, you know, it was a genius, chess champion in high school and college, translate ancient Greek for fun. I literally wrote the book on magnetism, and I'm the first person to accurately tell you what light is. It's a coaxial circuit. It's not merely transverse electrical and magnetic, but has a longitudinal dielectric. And Mother Nature, she's a really, really simple gal. Okay, she's not an insane uh, hooker on crack, as quantum mechanics would have you believe. She only understands two co-principles, force and motion, and inertia and acceleration. The entire universe is resistance, capacitance, permeability, magnetism, permittivity, dielectricity. Okay, what about that?
It means the explanation for this is 100% correct based upon everything that I know about magnetism, which is complete, and everything that I know about light, which is also complete. Uh, there's no such thing as a speed of light. It is a rate of induction. The maximum rate of transverse uh, field phenomena through a medium. That medium, of course, being the ether. There's no such thing as warp space-time. Einstein was incorrect on this. There is no premise to back this up. It's dielectric acceleration. That which we call gravity is dielectric acceleration. The same thing that you, that you saw. See, science, by the way, has no idea. There's a famous quote from Tesla that goes, if you want to understand the universe, you need to think in terms of frequency and wavelength. And, of course, correct on that. And people quote Tesla on that all the time, but they have no idea what the hell Tesla is saying. He's not simply saying frequency and wavelength. What he's talking about is capacitance. He's talking about the nature of that. You actually change in a given a, uh, a inertia or field perturbation. When you change the wavelength, when you change the frequency, you change the capacitance, you change the power. What happens when you think you go towards the end of the spectrum out in the sun? Well, you're going to get a sunburn. Not too bad. You start heading towards the blue end of the spectrum, whereas where all the dangerous crap is, x-rays, everything else, that's when you will kill you in a heartbeat. There is more capacitance per dielectric pulse in the longitudinal coaxial nature of light than there is towards the red end of the spectrum, okay? I'll sit here all day long with a blue end spectrum LED. Won't turn. Red, I'll sit here until I drop dead. It's not going to turn. I bring up the higher capacitance, the threshold. You know, each one of these little veins has a certain mass. I mean, this is not some serious output out of this little tiny LED. It's not much. But the veins will start to turn. Only with the higher capacitance light. Now, this is a fact. You don't believe me? These are all still the current theories on how this simple device works. This device is more simple than a saltine cracker. It is perched on a needle that works as basically a low friction bearing to allow these little veins to spin when, with applied light. Now, building something and reproducing something, easy. Any chimp can do it. Explaining something is where wisdom and true intellect comes into play. See, anybody can observe phenomena, like the idiot Einstein. He won a Nobel Prize for the photoelectric effect. By the way, the, this device, I'm going to tell you how it works in a second, works the exact same way the photoelectric effect works, as incorrectly explained by Einstein. Well, Einstein won a Nobel Prize. Yeah, you know what that means? That means one idiot, moron, um, tried to explain something and that explanation was accepted by a lot of other people who patted him on the back and gave him a Nobel Prize for something that he didn't deserve, uh, didn't deserve. Correct observations, which are reproducible, does not have any bearing on the explanation for that phenomena. This is a huge error in science. Huge error in science. Academic hubris is so... Where's your PhD at? Your PhD, you're saying you know more than people have a... P you know what a PhD in peer-reviewed means? PhD in peer-reviewed means that you kiss a bunch of assholes of people above you, you agree with their crap, and all those people did was agree with crap before them. It is a giant circle jerk of stupidity, ignorance, and hubris. H-U-B-R-I-S. Hubris. Academic hubris is the gigantic, disgusting cancer that sits inside the brains and the eyeballs of modern science. All these people do is parrot one idiot before them. And no invention, no creativity, nothing is uh, discovered new unless you start to think outside of the box and you stop kissing the ass of the people before you that didn't know anything and the people before them. The way this device works is the same way the photoelectric effect works. It was discovered that there's a certain threshold frequency of light that caused uh, the buildup between the cathode and the anode of electrostatic buildup. Okay? Now, Einstein's explanation for that was 100% incorrect. But since I understand exactly what light is, and I understand that Mother Nature is a really simple gal, she only works in force and motion, inertia and acceleration, resistance, capacitance, permeability, and permittivity. Everything is force and motion, inertia and acceleration. The way this works, and the way, the reason why the higher capacitance light towards the blue end of the spectrum, but a little further than the blue, towards the purple here, why this begins to spin up only this is the low, low emission LED here. Why it only begins to spin up with a higher capacitance and never with the red or the green or even the blue because this is low output is because what is actually going on is 
that there is an electrostatic buildup and a discharge against the medium. It is no different than a magnetic repulsion. It is a force repulsion against inertia. The reason that black vein, obviously the white light is reflecting. It doesn't matter what frequency the light is, obviously. The white light works the same thing with the flashlight. You bring it towards the white end of the vein, it'll stop. You, you point it towards the black end of the vein, it'll start to speed up. Okay, well that's perfectly understood, obviously. That's been understood now for well over 100 years regarding this simple device. The white light is obviously reflecting most of the light, so it starts to halt. You bring it towards the black end of the vein, it will start to speed up. Speed up there, point it towards the white, it'll halt. Just like applying the brakes on a car. So that's obviously understood. Reflectance. That's capacitance. The black painted vein, which is metal little veins, has higher capacitance. And when that capacitance threshold is breached, what happens is it sets up a force discharge. Like causing, basically, an electrical explosion. In some people's minds, they don't, they're unable to think in simple terms. I'm going to make a simple analogy. What you're doing is you're creating a force discharge, a miniature uh, electrical explosion, if you will, obviously incredibly small, a discharge of that black vein against the point of inertia. No, no different than uh, what you would ignorantly call magnetic repulsion. So yes, this little simplex device that's been around now for, e for ages, I was about to say eons, I mean this device has literally been around for a long time. You know, nobody's ever done this experiment with the Crookes radiometer. Why? Because nobody understands light. They don't. We think we do. We don't. Light has higher capacitance. It's more dangerous. We know towards the blue end of the spectrum, light becomes... Uh, of course, you know, the light becomes invisible at that end of the spectrum. It falls outside the visible range of human vision, but light becomes dangerous towards that end of the spectrum. Why do you think light becomes dangerous towards that end of the spectrum? Blue light's evil, you know, that's where the bad stuff happens. Towards the red light, you get a sunburn, you get a suntan. You know, you get a suntan, you're actually talking about thermal. Higher capacitance, smaller frequency. This is the case that people don't understand electricity. The smaller the space, the higher the capacitance. This is why blue and spectrum light is more powerful, more dangerous. It's the same reason why when I apply high capacitance light towards the black vein of this uh, Crookes radiometer, it starts to speed up. Why it won't do that at all if I apply the red light? I sit there all day long with the red light, it's not going to spin. Don't believe me, you can try this experiment for yourself. This device, there's still no agreement on how it works. There is uh, two huge pages on the theories on how the hell this device works. This device, we've got particle accelerators, the Hubble telescope, computers that are yin-yang, the iPhone, if you take the iPhone back a hundred years, people would think that it was a magical device. It is so neat. I mean, obviously it does tons and tons of stuff. We are very intelligent, but we're not very wise. We are advanced in certain areas, but we're incredibly ignorant as to the mechanics of Mother Nature. So I've been the first person in the world to show to you and explain to you demonstrably and reproducibly how this Crookes radiometer works. And it is 100% in line with everything I've ever said about magnetism and the coaxial, light is a coaxial circuit, the coaxial nature of light. Smaller the space, higher the capacitance. Towards the blue end of the spectrum, we got higher capacitance. This Crookes radiometer, these four veins have a certain mash, mass that needs to be breached for them to start to spin. Of course, I'm shaking the table and they're vibrating because they're basically sitting on a, a near zero friction um, glass uh, bearing there. But there's a certain mass that needs to be overcome for them to start to spin. And the blue light's the same intensity as the purple, and the green's the same intensity as the purple, and the red's the same intensity as the purple. So why is it only the purple, the higher capacitance light, will cause it to spin? It's the same luminal, I mean, it's the same luminal intensity as the red, the green, and the blue. So why only the purple? Because the capacitance threshold has been breached to set up a magnetic centrifugal discharge where the vein is actually repelling against the point of inertia. It is actually breaching that threshold capacitance. That is how this device works. And I'm the first person in the world to show you and tell you why it works. It's logical, it's reproducible, it's accurate, and it's irrefutable. You can complain and bitch all you want, but my explanation is logical and correct. 
and the rest of these have no basis in reality whatsoever. If you understand Mother Nature and how she works, she's really simple. Um, some of the most complex things, irreducibly, right underneath the surface, are incredibly simple. But we have not advanced enough yet as humans to understand the fundamental principles of the way things work. Force and motion, inertia and acceleration, resistance, capacitance, permeability, and permittivity. It's just that simple. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you later. Bye.